Hi, I'm Dr. Chase Lay, facial plastics and oculoplastic surgeon here in Cupertino, California. I get a lot of questions about ptosis or droopy eyelid surgery. This is a fairly large part of my practice. Ptosis can affect people of all ages at different points of their lives for different reasons. It's important you understand a little bit about the causes of ptosis and what's to be done about it. Congenital ptosis can be aponeurotic, which is a weakness or absence or poor attachments of the tendon from the muscle of the eyelid. Mechanical, which could be a tumor, excess skin, paralysis. And then there's myogenic, which is a weakness or absence of muscle that opens and raises the eyelid. Acquired ptosis can come in lots of different ways later in life. After pregnancy, I see this a lot. It can be from trauma. It can be from different muscular and neurologic disease processes. Or it can be something that we call pseudotosis, something that to even other physicians and the patient appears to be ptosis but is not and requires a different type of treatment. I can't stress enough the importance of getting a good history and physical exam and workup with an ophthalmologist or a good oculoplastic surgeon before going forward with any surgery. So how do we go from this to this in this patient? An external approach requires an external incision on the eyelid, but it's more powerful than other approaches. It's for more severe cases, and you can change or improve the position of the crease, which is particularly important in this patient. She's Asian and she has ptosis, which complicates things. If you notice here, she has two creases on the left side and one on the right. This is because of poor attachment of the levator aponeurosis to the underside of the skin and something called the tarsus. So I need to create one crease on the left side and it's all about planning. I plan the incision on the left side uh, preoperatively. I make some markings and determine where it is that I'm going to create this new crease and repair the ptosis. So here she is before, four days after surgery, and seven days after surgery. And then here's an angled view from the side showing that she's still a little swollen, but doing very well at seven days and she's very happy. So just to review, the external approach is done under local with the patient's participation. This is easier than going to the dentist and really it's not very uncomfortable at all. You will have sutures that need to be removed in six to seven days. And in my experience, it's better to remove sutures than to place dissolvable ones and allow them to come out on their own. You can work, read, go for walks, and do many of the other things you need to do within 24 to 36 hours, with the exception of strenuous exercise. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. We look forward to seeing you in Cupertino, and always feel free to contact the office if you have any questions.